Welcome to another outdoor adventure on Western Port. I wanted to come down here to this particular spot purely because I wanted to chase some land-based whiting. And I've caught land-based whiting here before and it's quite a productive spot. Not sure about this time of year, but what an absolutely glorious morning. I've come to this spot specifically on the rocks in Western Port purely because I can access some sandy areas that are quite a distance out. But being a low tide, I can walk out on these rocks. Now I'm here two hours before the dead of the low tide. It gives me access to fish here at the moment. And then as the tide retreats, I can actually work further and further out as um, on these rocks as they become more exposed. Anyway, it's a beautiful spot. It's a beautiful morning. I'm feeling like some whiting. Hopefully we can get into some. So as I mentioned before, this spot on low tide is really, really good. Um, and you can see why, purely because of the amount of sand and weed beds that are just out here. And I'm just casting as far as I possibly can, but each time I'm picking different locations in where to cast. I'm just covering a bit of area till I get a fish. Then I know exactly where to repeat my casts because hopefully there's a school of fish in that area. And we might be able to catch a feed. So anyway, we'll uh, just keep casting and keep working the area and get onto them. So I just want to take a couple of minutes and just run through the rigs. Quite simple and very effective for land-based fishing, especially for whiting. Uh, but also good for gummy sharks and snapper and other bits and pieces like that. I like this rig, it's worked for me for a number of years. It's really simple. I just take some 20 pound leader. I used to use a bit lighter, but this spot here in particular, I'm going to lose a few rigs because it's quite weedy as you cast out. So I'm now using 20 pound leader. I've got a mixture of hooks here. I've got some mustard demon circles, these are in a size two. And then I've got some traditional whiting mustard bloodworm long shanks which are also good. Why have I got two different hooks? Well, it depends on how the fish are biting. If they're quite finicky, they're not hooking themselves in the circles, I'll swap to that long shank. Of course, a good barrel swivel to prevent line twist from the tide. And then a range of sinkers. Why do I have a range of sinkers? Well, traditional bomb sinkers like this elongated one are very good for casting land base. I can get quite a bit of distance. Problem is though, I've got so much weed in behind me that I do get snagged, hence losing quite a few rigs. So I've actually bought some other style of sinkers as well, some spoon style sinkers to hopefully prevent being snagged. And hopefully what's gonna happen there is if I am getting snagged up quite a bit on these bombs, I'm gonna switch to some of these flatter styles so they actually come through the weed when I retrieve it a little bit easier. Anyway, we'll play it by ear, we'll see how we go. One thing you'll notice though, I'm only fishing four ounce. They're all four ounce sinkers. Why? Because I've fished from this location quite a bit and I know that four ounce sinkers will actually get quite the distance that I need. Pretty easy, pretty simple. So, next is the rig. So with the rig, I don't complicate it too much whatsoever. I have a dropper of about 60, 70 centimeters and this has just got my sinker, which is hanging on a loop. There's a swivel 
And then I've got another sectional line, which is my hook, which is connected to a swivel. There's my hook, which is the circle in this stage, in this case. And then my sinkers actually runs freely up and down the line. Why have I done it like this? Because when I cast this, my hook, my bait and my sinker are together. So all the weight is funneled at one end. That means I'm gonna get maximum casting distance. And then once that actually sits and drops to the bottom, that sinker can stay there and the bait can actually freely move around with the tide as it's running out. I can let out a bit of line and this can follow and the sinker can just stay in that one spot. So a very, very effective land based rig. Anyway, it's time to make a cast and start working this water. Well, I must say, it's not my intended target, but the old leather jacket, pretty as they are, certainly a good feed too, very, very tasty, but this guy's going back, because it's not what I want. But anyway, we'll keep plugging away. Nothing like catching the old unwanted species from time to time. Let's get him in the water. I'm certainly not using any fancy gear off the rocks. And the reason being is because they fall over sometimes if you don't get them stuck in a crevice properly. Fish could pull them over. You're going to get scratched rods. I'm using graphite rods here. They could break, they can damage. Reels could fall in the water. They're going to get inundated with salt. So I've just got some simple, affordable gear that I know is going to get damaged when I fish off the rocks. And guess what? Does the job. It's all that matters. Again, not my intended species, but look at the size of that for a six spot. Beautiful, beautiful leathery. There's a massive, massive flathead down here I'm trying to get. And this guy came in and took me bait. But anyway, we'll keep persisting. Hopefully we can get him. He's a big boy, a big Rocky. Sometimes you've just got to change it up a bit. I'm not normally one to enjoy catching what I call pest fish, which are the old uh, six pine leather jacket. But, oh my God, I've just, just on this ledge here, there was a massive, massive rock flathead. I missed him unfortunately and then spooked him. He did eat the bait, but all I'm doing, I've got no hooks, I'm not prepared for this. I'm just fishing Massive bits of calamari now with a size six, long, size six long shank. I've just changed it up. And my God, you want to see the size of these leatheries. They're big. I got him. Oh my god. Oh my god. Well, dude, 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 dude. I knew he was there, he was taking some. <laughs> I can't believe this. I came for whiting, 
I've got some of the most beautiful leather jacket, and this rock flathead is my PB. He is, I don't know, 55. He's a big, he's a big fish. On a size six mustard long shank, would you believe it? Can't catch whiting, can catch big rock flathead. That is so funny. Oh, and my last bit of bait. You wouldn't believe it. Okay, just take me sunnies off because I don't want to drop them on the rocks. Oh, just busted my line. Come on, dude, 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 just relax, relax, relax. Relax. Have a go, have a go, have a gawker at this. Look at that, look at that, look at that hook. That's size six right in the corner of the jaw. Have a look at that for a frog. Oh. <laughs> Where's the whiting? Who cares? Oh, what a fish. That is an absolute beast. Oh, wow. Thanks, mate. You're a challenge, but we got there. How good is that? Well, I'm not gonna lie, what sort of a fisherman am I? Can't even catch the species I'm intended to target, the old King George whiting. Well, it just goes to show they're not always where you think they're gonna be. I've fished here before in March, I've fished here before in April, and I've caught whiting. Today, don't know what it was. Was it the moon? Was it too calm? Was the tide too low? All those factors play roles. Nevertheless, I had the fresh bait, I still had the right gear. Unfortunately, the whiting just didn't show up, but I had a consolation prize. That absolutely gorgeous rock flathead. That is certainly an exciting bycatch. And a couple of leather jackets just swimming around the pool down there. So, it is what it is. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit the subscribe button. If you didn't, sorry I didn't get any whiting. But, you can't always catch them. But, look at that. What a beautiful, beautiful fish. Anyway, thanks very much. Catch you later.